Hello, I'm David Hughes. Welcome to Your Perfect Body, the podcast of the Esoteric Teaching Community. Today's selection is an essay entitled, Who is God? Part 4. We have seen in the Bhagavad Gita so far that Arjuna, when he cannot solve his problem independently, accepts Krishna as his guru. And we have also mentioned that the first pitfall on the path of spiritual life is to disobey the instructions of one's guru. What is the condition of one who does not follow the instructions of his guru? Then he's misguided, like a ship without a rudder or without a captain. A ship without a captain can never reach the destination. The crew will simply argue among themselves uselessly. They require leadership to be effective. Similarly, without a guru, we will simply remain on the mental platform, never coming to any practical conclusion. So we have to search for a guru and accept a bona fide guru if we are to attain perfection in spiritual life. How can we understand who is a a bona fide guru? Currently we are in illusion. Therefore we cannot know directly who is a bona fide guru. And there are so many false gurus. So if we try to choose a guru by our own intelligence, we will err. Well, consider this. When you go for treatment to a physician, how do you understand who's a bona fide doctor? You understand by the title and by his reputation. If he is accepted by the Physicians Association and granted a license as a doctor, then he is bona fide. Similarly, you have to find out who is a real guru by the symptoms. Krishna is the original guru. So whoever teaches the same philosophy as Krishna, both in theory and practice, is a bona fide guru. Other symptoms are described in the esoteric teaching. Tasmad gurum prapadyeta jignasu shreya utamam shabde pare chanishantam brahman yupa smarashrayam. Any person who seriously desires real happiness must seek a bona fide spiritual master and take shelter of him by initiation. The qualification of the bona fide guru is that he has realized the conclusions of the scriptures by deliberation and is able to convince others of these conclusions. Such great personalities who have taken shelter of the Supreme Godhead, leaving aside all material considerations, should be understood to be bona fide spiritual masters. Srimad Bhagavatam 11.3.21 So one who is very much inquisitive to know about spiritual life requires a guru. We are suffering in this material world. When the question comes into one's mind, why am I suffering? That inquiry is the beginning of spiritual life. A real human being, a human being in the full sense of the word, wants to inquire about spiritual life and find the solution to his suffering. When this spiritual inquiry awakens in one's mind, then one requires a guru. The method of approaching the guru is stated in Bhagavad Gita. Tad vidhi pranipatena pariprashnena sevaya upadekshyanti te jnanam jnaninas tatvadarshinaha. Just try to learn the truth by approaching a spiritual master. Inquire from him submissively and render service unto him. The self realized soul can impart knowledge unto you because he has seen the truth. Bhagavad Gita 4.34. One has to learn by surrendering, pranipata. So first of all, there must be a strong impulse to inquire about the transcendental subject matter. Then one requires a guru. But one must actually surrender to the guru to receive the benefit. Acharyavan purusho veda. One must come under the control of the guru to receive perfect knowledge. Chandogya Upanishad 6.14.2 
Therefore, the Vedas say, Tad vigyataranam sagurun eva bigachet, samit pani strotriyam brahmanishtam. To understand these things properly, one must humbly approach with firewood in hand a spiritual master who is learned in the Vedas and firmly devoted to the Absolute Truth. Mundaka Upanishad 1 2, 12. For understanding the transcendental science of the esoteric teaching, one must approach a guru. And what is the symptom of a guru? Samitpani strotriyam brahmanishtam. Guru means one who has complete knowledge of the Vedic version of the Absolute Truth, is fully self-realized, and he is an advanced devotee of the Supreme Lord. These are the qualifications of the bona fide guru. The guru strictly follows the Vedic injunctions and teaches the same thing to his disciples. So the first thing is that one must be inquisitive about spiritual life. Just like you have downloaded this podcast, you know that this is not political propaganda or commercial advertising. Here some deep spiritual subject matter is being discussed. Therefore you have come to hear. This inclination to hear from self-realized authority is the beginning of spiritual life. This is called Shraddha, or preliminary faith. So Shraddha has to be developed further. And to develop this Shraddha, one has to associate with persons who are also keeping this faith. Therefore it is said, Adao Shraddha Tata Sadhu Sangha. Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhya 23, 14 and 15. First of all, you must have faith. Then associate with persons who are devotees and faithful. In this way, with further development, then we reach Atta Bhajana Kriya, meaning the learning process of devotional service under the guidance of the Guru. The bona fide Guru prescribes some rules. One must chant the mantra given by the Guru and also avoid illicit sex, intoxication, gambling, and meat-eating. These are unwanted activities. In the beginning of life, nobody smokes or becomes intoxicated. It is learned by bad association. Similarly, these habits can be given up by good association. Bad habits are called anartas, meaning unwanted things. When we are children, innocent, we have no bad habits. But as we grow up and associate with bad company, we also acquire all these bad habits. So to give up all these bad habits means we have to associate with sadhus or devotees, saintly persons. Then we can give them up. This is called anarta nivriti, giving up all unwanted bad habits. Unwanted, we don't want these bad habits. I mean, after all, they're not necessary. Nobody dies if he does not smoke or drink. (laughs) Artificially, by bad association, we learn bad habits. So by accepting good association, we can give them up. Therefore, we strongly recommend forming local communities for study of the esoteric teaching in good association. So when, by good association, we are purified of all these bad habits, then we become fixed up in spiritual knowledge. So in this way we make advancement in spiritual life, and in the highest stage we become a lover of God. So this is the process of self-realization, in a nutshell, and one who teaches this process and also practices it himself is a guru. This is the definition of guru. Now some people interpret Bhagavad Gita 2.11 as indicating that Krishna is callous to the suffering of Arjuna. He says, you are lamenting like an unlearned man. A learned man never laments for the living nor the dead. So to some people this sounds like uh, Krishna is unsympathetic to our suffering. But this is not a fact. When Krishna gives Arjuna the esoteric teaching, it is because all the people are suffering on account of ignorance. Therefore, we are also teaching the same thing. We're not callous. We're sympathetic. We're compassionate. Which is why we try so hard to give this knowledge to everyone. But Krishna is right. Lamenting over the troubles of this body is not the path to knowledge. 
It is the road to ignorance and further suffering. The greatest sufferings of material existence are old age, disease, death, and rebirth. No amount of lamentation will stop these sufferings. We have only a limited amount of time, energy, and resources to attain perfection in spiritual life. 